Welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner Dr. Stephen Cabral shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurveda healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to the show. We're here today with part two of our Cabral host calls. Hopefully, you were able to tune in yesterday. We went over all sorts of great topics from our community where they wanted some answers, some place to get started, some way to move forward in order to improve their overall health for themselves or someone that they care for in their family. We answered topics on melasma. We talked about a Holter-based monitor and a heart-based block. We spoke about amla oil as its potential use for the hair. We talked about parasite protocols to do it before or after the CBO protocol. Should you do the parasite protocol or should you test first? Then we spoke about balancing hormones after a hysterectomy, a complete hysterectomy. And we also spoke about experiencing bloating, gas, and phlegm with a little bit of shortness of breath and what that may mean. So really, uh, again, excited to be able to answer your questions on a weekly basis. Every Saturday and Sunday, I answer at least five to six of the community's questions. And again, it's, it's been a pleasure to be able to do so for the last four plus years. So continuing with the same trend, let's dive right into today's questions. First question is coming in on June 19th. Okay, so we're about four weeks or so back. And this is from Marina. Marina says, hi, Dr. Paul. I'll be finishing the CBO protocol soon, and I'm a bit scared of integrating the foods that are not on the sensitive gut guide on a daily basis. Should I be scared about having too much of the other foods, such as cauliflower, watermelon, mushrooms, or any foods not listed? I really don't want to live my life scared about all these great fruits and veggies. I'm the typical person that can get very paranoid and think my candida will come back. What are your thoughts on that? Also, I'm not a big drinker, but I go out for dinner occasionally and I do enjoy ordering a bottle of wine with my partner. Should I still limit one glass of wine per week for the rest of my life to avoid getting yeast overgrowth again? Everything feels so restricted. Please help. Okay, great question and happy to help you through this. So on the instructions on the sensitive gut guide, actually after the first three weeks, you can begin to reintroduce certain types of grains if you choose to. After about four weeks to six weeks, you can actually introduce other fruits. After eight weeks, you can begin to introduce more of the higher fructose-based vegetables, and that would include garlic as well. In terms of alcohol, after 21 days, you can have a couple drinks if you'd like, once a week for the 12-week program, and then after that, it's, it's at your discretion. Now, one of the reasons why this plan works so well is that it goes from removing a lot of the overgrowth to replenishing with the proper bacteria so that candida or negative-based bacteria can't then overgrow to the same degree. Now, of course, eat a good diet. There's no doubt about that. But eating healthy foods is never off limits, especially after the eight-week mark as you're reintroducing. Now, if you eat a certain food, we talk about reintroducing one new food every three days because if it causes bloating, well, it just isn't working for you right now. It doesn't mean it never will. It just means for right now, it's not working and that's okay. So the nice thing, you can look at it two ways. One is you should reintroduce these foods as long as they don't cause any issues. And the other is that if let's say five years from now, the yeast were to overgrow Marina, you can always repeat the protocol. So it's not like you don't have a way out of this. So I would say, you know, in my opinion, don't be as scared. Don't be as afraid, sorry. Don't be as paranoid And as long as you feel now symptom-free, I think you're doing great. And then just, again, ease into all of these different introductions. Don't do them all in one day. Just one every three days. Try it out. All right. So hopefully that helps. Susan's up next. Hello, Dr. Wall. Thank you so much for all that you do. You are truly a blessing in our lives. Thank you, Susan. My question is, why is it that we have to wait until we finish the candida and bacterial optimizing protocol before starting the gut rebuilding protocol? Is it because it's virtually impossible to rebuild our gut wall until all the pathogens are eradicated? Susan, great question. There's two parts to this. So one is that we are actually removing during the first month. 
In the second month, we start to rebuild slowly. By the third month, we're fully rebuilding. So why don't we just add in the what's called the healthy gut support and the daily probiotic support after which, which by the way, Marina, please make sure you're doing the CBO finisher, the healthy gut support and the daily probiotic because you actually want to make sure that you finish the, the project. Okay. So Susan, two reasons. Uh, I just gave you the first one. We're starting the rebuilding process after about eight weeks fully. And then on the second is just cost. We don't want people to have to spend all the money up front that if we can start to move it down a little bit, well, then that's great. But no, I mean, to be honest, in the past, for certain select people that we feel they just have so much intestinal permeability, we start the process right away. And we actually use the healthy gut support for six months. So we start it right away, right in the very beginning. It's not going to hurt, And so then we just go right into the protocol. But we also, we're very cognizant of costs in our practice. We really are. And so we say, well, the CBO finisher is like $89 and $99 or so a month. It's two great products. You only need to use them for 12 weeks and then you're done. You know, great. Again, you can continue on with the daily probiotic support, which I would, but that's that. So it's cost. And then it's also, I like to add it in when it's going to give you the most bang for your buck, which is after the six to eight week mark. All right. Katie's up next. I did the organic acids test in the hair tissue mineral analysis test last October. My organic acids test came back great. And my minerals test came back with some low minerals, but overall great. I recently have started to get allergy-like symptoms and acid reflux, which is worse at night, to the point I can't sleep. I feel like I'm choking. Do you have a recommended test? I was going to try the apple cider vinegar too. How many times per day is that recommended? Okay, Katie, yeah, I mean, let's see. If you just started to get allergy-like symptoms and acid reflux, I would say, did anything change in your diet? Did you start adding in things like people add in fermented vegetables? Well, maybe that's causing it. Or maybe you started adding in more green juice. Like again, green juice is great, but maybe not for you. So there's always like, you always look at anything you added in. Okay. The last part is did stress increase because this could be what's called achalasia and it's ACH. If you want to look that up at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, look up achalasia and you'll see that this mimics a lot of what you're speaking about right now. And it's brought on by stress. Okay. So if that's the case, we are going to run, Katie, the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism test. That would be the lab to run. Thank you for writing in. Don's up next. Hi, Dr. Rawl. What is the reason my feet are cold even in the summer when the rest of my body is warm? Thanks. Love your book and podcast. Don, thank you for writing in. This coming in on June 20th. Well, let me give you the main reasons why. Cold hands and feet. Typically, it's circulatory, right? Circulation, blood flow is not getting to the capillaries. Why wouldn't it be getting to the capillaries at the end of those fingers and toes? Well, think of your heart as a lake, okay? And then think of the lake pouring out into smaller rivers. And then think of those rivers going into smaller rivers and little brooks and streams and then just like a little trickle, all right? Well, the very end of that is your fingers and toes, just the small capillaries. So your blood pumps out. And by the time it gets there, there's restriction, there's constriction. Why do we get constriction? Well, some medications do it. Okay, so that's one issue. Low thyroid. So this is a symptom of low thyroid sometimes. Poor circulations as in higher blood pressure sometimes. What else could this be? Any stress-induced disorder. So the same test I just recommended for Katie, I'd recommend but I'd also recommend the starter kit on top of it. And I'd recommend the omega-3. So basically you're looking at do the big five. I mean, really the big five lab test, Don, would be the best. I mean, that's the best place for everybody. The only reason you wouldn't run the big five is simply because of cost. And I understand there is a cost to running those labs. We try to get them to you at the best possible price. And it comes with a full wellness plan and it comes with a hour long or even maybe even longer health coaching call. So it's pretty fantastic. But of course there's a cost to it because the labs cost us money. So That's the way that it works, I guess, right? Maybe one day health insurance will cover real health. I mean, that that would be a nice day. So, Don, that's what to look for, okay? And thank you for writing in. Lindsay's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. As always, thank you for sharing your wealth of knowledge. I recently ran the big five labs and found out that I have quite a bit of yeast and bacterial overgrowth and leaky gut because of that. I also had high cortisol and with all of the combination of my results, I was told I'm in constant fight or flight mode and have adrenal-based fatigue. My food sensitivity looked pretty good at first glance, except it was explained that my immune system 
may have been stressed for so long that has lowered my reactivity to foods, so my sensitivities are not showing on the test. I do not have any symptoms of intestinal permeability, adrenal fatigue, yeast or cortisol, except maybe some brain fog. My digestion is great, no bloating or gas even. I actually thought I had my stress under control and even took the test during quarantine when my stress was quite low. I am currently parasite cleansing, then on to CBO and other supplements from my recommended personalized plan. So my question is, if I feel so good and I didn't have any signs of these problems now, how will I know when my yeast, cortisol, and gut is fixed or that I am not in fight or flight mode? I'm now cautious about fasting and timing exercise. Also, when can I retest my food sensitivities to get an accurate result? All right, really good question. So there is a possibility on a food sensitivity test that your numbers are all really low. Typically, when you don't show a bunch of what's called the little, well, let's use just a generic term, little black ticks on the lab test that show you how sensitive you are to a food, if you have like 25% of those that don't even have any black line at all, it can show potentially a depressed immunoglobulin G, part of the immune system. And that can be from, it could be from years of intestinal permeability where the IgG response isn't as great. The same thing happens with IgA. It's not like this is uncommon. It is. So, you know, again, this is the big five labs, the big five labs for people who don't know, um, and you can find all of these labs at equilibriumnutrition.com. Okay, I'm going to do the three gut-based tests. Food sensitivity, candida, metabolic, and vitamins, and then you're on the stress hormones, mood, and metabolism, then you're on the omega-3, then you're on the minerals and metals test, okay? So that's the big five. And yeah, some people don't have symptoms. So I work with a lot of people that are looking to do optimizing of their health or biohacking or anti-aging, and they run them once a year. And sometimes we find things and those are things to work on. So that's always the case. It means that you kind of find these things early before it begins to really fill up the rain barrel and then you have symptoms. And some people have very strong constitutions, so they just don't show as much. The only way that you know if you don't have any symptoms in the first place. Now, if you have symptoms and you feel better, well, you know that everything's working well. The only way to retest here would be you can retest after 16 weeks of being on all of these protocols. So, Lindsay, that's um, how to do it. All right, Nancy's up next. Hello, Dr. Brawl. I recently tried the Siete brand cassava wraps, thanks to you. I love all of your food brand suggestions. My dad is planning on starting the CBO protocol when summer ends, and we were wondering if he can eat cassava. We don't see it on the sensitive gut guide, but it seems to be gluten-free. Thank you. Okay, Nancy, thank you for writing in, and I'm glad that those cassava wraps were a good recommendation for you. I actually use them on many of our Taco Tuesday nights in my household. So my daughters love them. They like the soft wraps. I like the hard shells for the cassava. But um, yeah, we can do both. So, and the nice thing is, yes, you can use them on the sensitive gut guide as long as they don't cause bloating because they are lower inflammatory. They're lower in fructans and they're lower glycemic. So they pass the test. All right, let's do another question. We're flying through questions today. Mio or Mayo is up next. Hi, Dr. Brawl. I'm asking this for a friend. I think you would be the only person who may have some insight or idea of what to do for her. She's 29 years old, quite healthy, has a positive outlook on life, and in great shape. When she was 14, she took half a bottle of ibuprofen and ended up having the doctor at the hospital give her charcoal to get it out and save her. A year and a half later, after she was fine and had no issues, her kidneys started failing. She found she needed a kidney transplant later on. Since then, she's been doing hemodialysis three times a week at the hospital and has, can't write the whole name because I don't know, FSGS kidney condition. She has O negative blood. She got a kidney transplant in 2012, but within 48 hours, it failed. They don't know why. She's doing fine now, but I myself have had many issues, severe colitis and skin issues, that I managed to fix with your advice and thought maybe you had something or knew of something she could do. I know you're not able to prescribe or give advice, but have you seen this before? Have you had any experience with people in the same situation? I was hoping I could share it with her. I know it'll take 12 or more weeks to hear back, but that's okay. I listen to every episode, so I'll be waiting to hear back. No rush. Thank you. Mio, thank you for writing in, and I appreciate your support listening on a daily basis. It means a lot to me. So let's see if we can give you at least a few places to get started for your friend. So like you alluded to, I can't give you any treatments for this. There's no cures that I'm able to share with you. Again, using FDA guidelines, only your medical doctor can give you treatments for disease. 
what I would share with you, and, I, and I've talked about, if you go back to stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, let me see if I can find it right now for you. So stephencabral.com forward slash podcast, and I'm just going to type in kidney cleanse. That's it. Kidney cleanse. Let's see if I can find it. All right. So I talked about them all on different house calls. You'll be able to find those specifically. So here's the thing. I'm reluctant to give specific herbs that help with the kidneys because I don't necessarily want to have you say that this is the right thing to do, right? So I want to be a little bit careful with that, with saying these are all the great things to do. I will just let you know that certain herbs that have been used for the kidneys and so-called kidney cleansing in the past have been, at the top of my list, I've used this before, is ginger. So drinking ginger tea, all of this would have to be cleared with your friend's medical doctor and specialist, but ginger tea, I would drink two to three cups a day. I mean, I really would. That's for sure a go-to. Other things that might be beneficial would be red clover, would be goldenrod, would be some nettles. I'm I'm an advocate of nettles as well, and potentially some marshmallow root or dandelion tea. The big thing I want to find out is what's causing this inflammation in your friend's body? Because I'm not sure if this had anything to do with the Advil ibuprofen or not. It could have been that FSGS is, it's a very rare and it's it's a genetic disease. Now, again, these genetic diseases are typically manifested because the rain barrel has met its match, right? It's overflowed. So if your friend's able to run even just the candida metabolic and vitamins test, maybe they'd see that they have some type of gut-based issues. They could maybe run along with that, the bacteria and parasite stool test. So I would definitely recommend that. And then of course, again, you'd have to check with the medical doctor, but I'm a huge advocate of FSGS kidney-based issues can lead to, I believe, nephrotic syndrome that typically happens from scarring of the tubules in the kidneys themselves. Because think of the kidneys as as a filter. Well, they start to get scarred, right? So it makes it more difficult for the blood to be filtered through the kidneys. So what I'd recommend typically in these situations is a proteolytic-based enzyme. Uh, And so I just want to, again, you could bring this up to your friend. They could do additional research on it. They could bring it to their specialist. But I am an advocate of proteolytic enzymes for anything in these particular based issues. So hopefully that was helpful. Again, look for heavy metals. Look for all the things that could potentially cause a dis-ease of the body. All right. Let's um, see if we can get one or two more questions. Samantha's up next. Hi, Dr. Sproul. Are you a fan of Myomin? Thanks so much, Samantha. Okay. So Myomin is, I've seen the product before. I don't use it in my practice, okay? It's a traditional Chinese medicine herbal blend, but I've studied traditional Chinese medicine and my practice is a conglomeration essentially of Ayurvedic, uh, traditional Chinese medicine, orthomolecular medicine, bioregulatory medicine, naturopathic, Eastern-based philosophy. There's a lot that goes into it. Functional medicine, it's what we call it the Integrative Health Practitioner Institute. So Myomin, I believe though, is made up of curcumin, turmeric, It's made up of astragalus. And then there's one that I haven't heard of before, or I shouldn't say heard of, that I don't use. And I believe it's, and and again, I might be off base, but it might be, I think it's called nut grass. That's literally the name of it translated to English. Could be off in the last one. So do I use astragalus? Yes. Do I use curcumin in my practice? Yes. Do I use the nut grass? I do not. So what does this help with? Well, it typically helps with uh, balancing hormonal levels, oftentimes used more with women. Here's what I do in my practice. We run first the stress hormones, mood and metabolism test. If there is estrogen dominance, which is oftentimes why you would use a product like this, we move towards a product called estrogen balance. We also do fasting. We do 7, 14, or 21-day detox. We're using magnesium. We're often using adrenal soothe or other sleep-based protocols as well as at night. We never look at one product because, again, even though there are great supplements out there, I always want to know why. And I'm, I'm always asking, like, what's the underlying root cause of this? So I'm a huge advocate of nutritional supplements done right. I'm not a huge advocate of, I'll probably do another podcast on this. But to be honest, most people are in the supplement business to just try to make some money. They really are. I mean, there are full courses on it online, how to make money creating your own supplement. You don't even know who's creating them for you. They just sell them on Amazon. Like it's, it's a really shady business. It really is. So I just say, listen, you can get your nutritional supplements through the company that I formulate for, or 
You can get them from your local functional medicine practitioner from functional medicine company that you trust. That's it. I mean, like, don't go purchasing these products without knowing the company that's making them because they're not using good science behind it. They don't stand behind it. They're just looking to make money. That's really it. So anyway, I'm a huge advocate, but also the reason why I went on that rant is that I'm not a silver bullet supplement kind of guy, meaning like, okay, you have high cholesterol, just take CoQ10. No, it doesn't work that way. That's just not how it works. Use nutritional supplements as part of the de-stress protocol. I wrote about that in my book, The Rain Barrel Effect. Use it with diet, exercise, stress reduction, toxin removal, rest, emotional balance. Yes, supplement protocols and success mindset. That's the way that you truly get well. Nobody gets well through one nutritional supplement. It just doesn't work that way. Yes, replacing deficiencies in B vitamins and zinc and vitamin C, they help a lot. But if you want it to stick, you need to use the full de-stress protocol. So hopefully that was helpful. Thank you for writing in. That will be our Q&A for the day. So uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow on our motivation and mindset, a great way to start the week. Have an amazing rest of the weekend. And if this podcast was helpful, please do feel free to share it with anyone you believe it could serve. Take care, everybody. I want to sincerely thank you for your support of this podcast. I couldn't do it without you, and I mean that. I truly do. I also want to make sure you knew that we now have multiple ways for you to find your answers to the most difficult health, wellness, weight loss, and anti-aging questions. You can find podcast-specific topics like thyroid, adrenal, hormones, sleep, digestion, Ayurveda, and many more at stephencabral.com forward slash podcasts that will then link you to your favorite Apple, Spotify, and other podcast players. Plus, all new podcasts and weekly exclusive video content is being added to our YouTube channel at youtube.com forward slash Stephen Cabral. And that's Stephen with a PH. Head on over and subscribe so that you don't miss any of the exclusive content. Lastly, if you've ever found any of my podcasts or books to be helpful, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a review on iTunes or your favorite media player for the podcast. Rating and subscribing to the YouTube and podcast allow me to reach more and more people and help spread my mission of healing throughout the world. Thank you again for being a part of this movement.